We have a new thermodynamic cycle that we call the high efficiency hybrid cycle. We call it the hybrid cycle because what we're doing is combining features of other existing cycles. We're sort of cherry picking the best parts of all these cycles. So if you look at a diesel engine, diesels are typically more efficient than gasoline engines in, in the field. The reason for that is simple because they have a higher compression ratio. And if you look at the system from a thermodynamic perspective, increasing the compression ratio increases the pressure and you sort of expand the, the, the PV diagram and you, you generate more uh, energy conversion with that cycle. The problem with a diesel engine, when you compress the air, you add fuel, it takes a while for that air to be uh, mixed with the fuel for it to burn. While you're burning your fuel, your piston is expanding. So your pressure is dropping while you're trying to build pressure from combustion. This is problematic because in a PV diagram, you're, you're chopping off the whole peak there and robbing the engine of its potential efficiency. What we do, just like a diesel, we compress to a high compression ratio, then we stop and we don't allow the volume to change. We add our fuel, we do our, our mixing and burning under constant volume conditions. This gives you much higher pressures, a much higher thermal efficiency, and then we continue expanding and rather than compressing and expanding to the same point, there's a lot of energy left over in the exhaust. If you've ever heard a vehicle that has a, a, a leak in the muffler, it's extremely noisy. You're hearing the energy that's left over in the exhaust. What we want to do is continue that expansion process beyond the initial compression process. So when you add those three features together, high compression, constant volume combustion, and overexpansion, it gives you a 75% thermodynamic efficiency which is a, a, really a disruption in efficiency. That's a theoretical limit. The engine will never achieve that theoretical limit, but that theoretical limit is about 30% higher than, than today's engine's theoretical limits. So that's kind of a, a new uh, starting point for our technology. Today we have about 20 people in the company. We're managing two projects, one for the Army, one for DARPA. So we have these two engine programs under development. Uh, as we scale, we would add additional engineering teams to handle new projects with, with new customers. Uh, we have a lot of interest right now in the 200 horsepower size range, and that, that can be for a variety of different applications, but we're developing an entire family of uh, engines that can cover uh, you know, various applications. So we're going to customize these for individual uh, customers. We'll assign project teams to these and then license the technology uh, as, as they're proven to be suitable for these customers. You know, th this company was really born uh, out of MIT. I was a grad student here back in 2003. I took a few uh, classes in the business school and um, you know, learned about the 50K competition. We were working with um, Sloan students when we entered the competition and uh, we, we had, um, re really that competition helped catalyze this company and launch this company. Uh, after that, we've been a member of the Venture Mentoring Service at MIT, which has been very helpful uh, for us. And then most recently, we've been inducted into the STEX 25. And working closely uh, with uh, uh, STEX in, in the STEX program, we've been able to develop relationships with partners that we haven't uh, really been able to connect with uh, before. So that's been very helpful for us. Uh, so the company has 45 patents that are either issued or pending internationally. It's a very uh, broad patent portfolio, but also very deep. So we have patents at the highest level on a new thermodynamic cycle. This is something that really hasn't changed in 150 years, right? So this is uh, a very large breakthrough in patent. And it doesn't matter what the engine looks like. If it operates on this new cycle, it would infringe on those patents. Below that, we have what we call the engine architecture. So imagine patenting a four-stroke piston engine. That's the level of that second layer of patent where we patent our new kinds of rotary engine. And below that, we have our enabling features. How do you cool it? How do you seal it? How do you lubricate it? How do you control it? It's all the little things that make it work. That's where most patents live today, and we have a lot of patents there as well. So it's, uh, it's very exciting to have such a, a thorough uh, patent portfolio. My father is the primary developer of this technology. He's a physicist by background. Uh, he worked as an engineer in value analysis for a while. And then he went off and started doing innovation consulting. And, uh, he's an expert in a field called TRIZ, 
which is a Russian acronym. It stands for Theory of Inventive Problem Solving in English. Uh, it's really a systematic way to solve problems. So what he used to do, he used to come into Fortune 500 companies that were stuck on some kind of problem. And he would come in from the outside. He wasn't an expert on what they were working on, but by asking the right sets of questions, you could eventually reformulate the problem that somebody is working on. And when you do that, when you really come down to the very core essence of a problem, new ideas, new solutions can stand out. So uh, he, he's kind of an expert in that, and we use that a lot at Liquid Piston. Um, so we're, we're, we consider ourselves a very innovative company, but my father and I came from outside of the engine field. Right? My, my background is in computer science, robotics, and neuroscience. His background is in physics. We're not re real, quote unquote, engine people. And we surround ourselves with a team of engineers that are engine people, but I think the hardcore innovation came from really pushing the envelope, from not knowing what's possible or not possible. We're constantly exploring that boundary and pushing the boundary of the box, simply because we don't, we don't know any better. So I think for us, that's been a, a, a critical component to our innovation. Um, so we, we have a, a very solid team. We have about 20 people right now, mostly engineers with engine development backgrounds. We have a nice mix of folks with advanced degrees, including PhDs from some of the leading uh, research uh, institutes that, that study combustion engines today, uh, and, and, and master's degrees. Um, so it's, it's really a, a, a diverse team. We have some electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, folks that do testing and design. That's a very, uh, very capable team.